That is good. So thank you again to our executives for the Q&A. It was very, very enlightening. But now we're moving on to something truly special. It is my pleasure to welcome Maria Egan, Global Head of Music, who will be hosting our fireside chat with Lincoln Park. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. And please join me in welcoming with a great applause. If you have it in you, co-lead vocalist and producer Mike Shinoa. DJ video director Joe Han, bass guitarist Dave Farrell, co-lead vocalist Emily Armstrong, and drummer co-producer Colin Britton. Hello. Whoa. Hi, this one is hot mics. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Hey oh everybody. God, so Thanks for here. being here. This has been this has been many months in the making. So this is. Hi everyone, welcome. Thanks for being here. I am I am actually thrilled to be here, one of my favorite bands of all time. So this is a bit of a dream come true um, for many of us at Raya and for our players. So welcome to Worlds. Uh, how are you feeling? So nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I feel like wait, it is a different kind of experience. It's a very, it's, yeah, it's different it's than a, a our regular concert. We've been rehearsing all week, but we're looking we, forward yeah. to it. Yeah, OC performance tomorrow is gonna be amazing. So thank you so much. Um, so as I said, Riot is really proud to be part of this incredible return to the spotlight. And Mike, we, we first met about this several months ago, and this was all a, still a huge secret. Can you tell us a little bit about why this felt exciting to you for the band to collaborate with us? Yeah, as, as, I mean, like you were saying, like we had to let you in the door on our secret yeah. first. Yeah. And we were, you know, I've had a relationship with different folks from Riot for a while, um, from Brandon, a few years ago, I don't even remember how we met, but Brandon Beck and I had, had kind of talked once in a while. And eventually I met um, Christian from Arcane and I met various people from from the world side and uh, my one of my favorite games, Valorant as well. Um, so yeah, just as we were, you know, putting together our new music and and the and the band started kind of gelling, um, it was almost like natural that the conversations began. Um, about worlds and we're we're you know I think there's a lot of synergy between the the way they look at things creatively and the things that we're doing creatively and there's a lot of synergy in the fan bases um so yeah we're excited to be here awesome thank you and so we said there's there's two versions actually of Heavy's the Crown so there's this obviously the anthem version that we all know mm. and there's another one coming in Arcane so maybe you and Emily worked on that together so maybe you can talk a little bit about how those two versions came together. Yeah, yeah, the cinematic, right? Yeah. Uh, the, we love the show, first of all, um, and the opportunity came up to kind of, they were, they were writing things for it, and I got in, um, I got in the room with some of the, the music team on that and wrote a, it's like, a, it was like wrote, wrote a lyric, like wrote a, a part. And the part, um, the words of it became, it was like that kind of like turned into or had a connection with our song Heavy is the Crown. Like the two things kind of evolved together. Um, and Emily sang it both ways. Yeah, it was actually harder to sing it the uh, quiet way, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> it was really challenging. Yeah. Really, really quiet. Yeah, it's coming soon. They're going to see it soon. So we can't yeah. wait for everyone to hear that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So fun fact, Heavy's the Crown is now actually the biggest anthem in world's history. So we had... That's what? Yeah. So crazy. Yeah, massive. Yeah. Wow. So we had almost 10 million views on the video in the first 24 hours. The song now is over 360 million streams and one of the band's top songs as well. So I asked Joe, actually, did you expect this kind of resonance between the Phantoms? Was that, did you anticipate this? Yeah. Um... I, I, I expect it to go even further. Uh, no, um, I think for us, it's just a matter of what feels right. The DNA of mm -hmm. Riot, League of Legends, the Worlds event uh, fits in really well with what the band's been about historically. Uh, our audience, you know, we all grew up um, playing Nintendo to different consoles. Uh, PC games and now, you know, games like League of Legends is just on super steroids. And to see the competitive atmosphere and 
the passion and the love for yeah. for gaming in general. It just we we love that the fans are are doing that for the game. So we love it when our fans are are that enthusiastic with what we're doing and to have it all combined, you know, the 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 passion, the storytelling, the visuals, yeah. it all everything everything about it and all the conversations we had with Riot made so much sense. Right. The yeah, only no. thing that we haven't the only bridge we haven't crossed yet is to see some Johan cosplay. Oh. So just putting it out there, <laughs> if anybody is feeling like that might it might be you, um, please, you know. Um, well, Colin's really good at it. Yeah. I yeah, mean, they don't know that that look I wouldn't really do it, but now knowing that Colin loves cosplay, <laughs> like not even like. No, he loves. Loves love. cosplay. He's really That's, good at it. Does Colin want to talk about that? No. <laughs> no. Sorry, guys. We tried. We'll come back to that. It could happen. I mean, one of the things that was amazing, we, we knew, I think, we talked about there being an overlap in the fandoms, but we saw when the video came out, the YouTube comments were like, my two favorite, my favorite game, my favorite band. Mm. And it was, it was so thrilling for us, I'm sure for you too, when you have a guess that something's going to work and the, and the people react exactly yeah. as you hoped. It was, it was yeah. awesome. So there actually may be cosplayers out there. I would do not do not be surprised. We definitely hope so. Yeah. Yes. Um, and Carl, I have a question for you. So you talked about the, what's next for the song. And so what's next for the band? What's next for the song after the performance tomorrow? Well, we have an album coming out November fifteenth, okay. which we worked really hard on and um, we're really excited about. So that's probably the thing I'm looking forward to the most. But also, like uh, we've got a bunch of shows coming up too. Yeah. So we're playing Paris this weekend. Um, going back to Dallas, we're going to be in, see our fans in Bogota and uh, Brazil, which I'm really excited about. I know that's something we've been looking forward to for a long time. Yeah, I saw the LA show. It was, I mean, unbelievable. And you asked at some point, is this, for a lot of people, it was their first in Kapat oh, yeah, church. That's right. It was amazing. Yeah, I was actually really surprised yeah. about that. I asked the crowd, you know, who's who's seen the band before and who hasn't. And it was about 50-50. It was, yeah. yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Awesome. So I have a, actually a question from Kenneth Lim at TechStorm, who's in the audience today. Um, I'm going to give this to Dave, actually. Uh, the question is, Heavy is the Crown is a message that really resonates with fans of League, but what do you want non-gaming fans to get out of the song? It's a great question. I think, I think for me and for us, for gaming fans and non-game fans alike, our approach to music has always been about connection. Um, you know, we want first and foremost to connect and feel uh, passionate about what we're doing. And, and we try to connect and write music that we really believe in and that we're excited about. And then when you hand that over and share it with the world, like you hope that that gets kind of returned back to you with the same feeling and sentiment. So with this album in general and Heavy is the Crown in particular, I think it's already working. You know, people can connect with it. They can know that they're not alone. I think one of the best parts about music in general, at least in my life, is it gave me a connection to be able to emotionally connect with the world around me in like a safe and exciting and fun way um, to feel community and to feel a part of something that was bigger than myself. So that's all we, that's kind of like all we've ever wanted to do with music. And with that song in particular, I think people are connecting with it in that way. And hopefully that continues. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. This, I think that's all we have time for. You've got to get back to rehearsals, which is, which is happening across the street. Um, and I think we have a quick photo, and then we're going to hand it back to you, Shuk, to wrap thank it up. You. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. be in order, I think. Come on. <laughs> I wasn't looking so clear. Slow plan. <laughs> Thank you so much to Maria and Sir Lincoln Park. Of course, we're also excited for tomorrow's opening ceremony presented by MasterCard. We'll have Ash Nico, Mars Atlas of Ford, Tiffany Aris, and Lincoln Park all to kick off the finals, which is absolutely amazing. You can't leave yet because we're taking some pictures, if that's okay uh, with all of you. But for everyone here, we're going to take a quick 20 minute break so you can grab some refreshments. And then we will return with uh, the second half of our show and T1 and Billy Billy Gaming after that. So there you go. Thank you.